What's up guys, welcome to Daily Refinement. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the platform, Whatnot, all the best tips and tricks and strategies that I have seen work on the platform. I've been on Whatnot now, we're going into our fourth month and I just crossed over $400,000 in sales. I think that this year in 2022, my first year, I will cross over a million dollars in sales. So I'm gonna go over all the tips, strategies on how you can be successful on the platform. Also as a bonus, there's a couple of things. I'm gonna show you guys how I actually launch a show and I'm also gonna use some tips and tricks on how you can get approved to sell on the platform. So whatnot and live streaming are becoming very, very popular ways to move inventory. So I'm gonna go over hopefully a cheat code for me to help you guys get approved as a seller, but I'll go over literally all the stuff that I know so far in the first three months. I don't consider myself an expert yet because whatnot just came out for me. I just learned about it recently, but I do have some things that have worked for me and I wanna share those concepts with you. So please smash the like button, consider subscribing. Also make sure you bookmark my upcoming show, which we'll go over in just a moment. Thanks everyone. So before we get into the video, it all boils down to creating value for the customer. So I actually think there are four main ways to deliver value to the customer on any website, not just whatnot. And then I'm gonna go over the eight specific strategies that I think work on whatnot as a streamer. And I'm gonna show you guys how I use all eight of these elements in my show coming up on July 8th. I have 6,000 t-shirts for sale and all the t-shirts I'm gonna run at $10 plus shipping. So these are all brand new shirts with a value of $35. And my intention is to get people who've never used Whatnot before to join, use my $10 referral credit and get the t-shirt for free plus the cost of shipping. Also, I'm gonna go over all the different strategies I go through to try to actually sell out of all 6,000 shirts in literally four hours. I'm gonna go over all the strategies I know on the platform. So please support me, bookmark this page. Um, it's a show on July 8th, it's between 10 and 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And if you bookmark it and you use my referral code, Daily Refinement, you'll be able to get $10 off your first purchase. But as a reseller, most of the people listening to this you want to buy as many shirts as you can because these shirts have an average value of about $30. So you buying it for $10, if you buy the bigger lots, you'll see how I use the different shipping bundles to create a cheaper per unit price in case you want to use whatnot as a wholesaler. I'll show you guys how to do that. And also I'll go over how to do tax exempt on whatnot because I purchase things to resell from whatnot, but it doesn't make sense to pay 10% California tax on that. So I'll go over the link for you guys to apply for tax exempt. It'll also be in the description below. So let's get now into the strategies. Okay, there are four things I really believe increase the value of a whatnot stream. One's gonna be the production value, so sound, the host, music, that's gonna make a really lively um, environment which makes people bid more and more excited and more fun. Uh, number two is gonna be having cool stuff. So as an example, this pair of joggers is Chinatown Market. It's got some cool graphics. Stuff that's louder is gonna do better on whatnot in my opinion versus something more understated. However, that being said, um, cool is number two. Number three would be brands. So something designer like Valentino is probably going to sell really well. If you're going to sell designer brands, I personally don't sell them on whatnot. I would recommend you either understand the full authenticity of the item or actually get it authenticated. So to make sure that you're not selling fakes on the platform because you will be immediately banned. For me personally, I just sell sort of mid-range mall brands to avoid that issue. So Entertainment value also comes from selling things that are unique. This is a soul cycle, soul cycle um, jumpsuit. So something like this might command a premium price because it's cool. It's a lot easier to show this on a stream than um, so let's say on eBay with only 12 photos, you can't do it justice. You could also put it on and dance around, which would make it a lot more fun. When you combine all of those elements with a great price, now you're gonna get something crazy. Like this Yo MTV Wraps jacket is from the set. Um, so this is hitting on so many different keywords. Yo MTV Wraps, it's hitting on old school music, it's hitting on music videos, um, it's part of the 90s vibe, which is really on fire right now. So these kinds of items, if you start them all at $1, you're gonna create the most frenzy. So for me, having all the items buy it now for $10 in the stream, all of those are priced well below market and to the point where a reseller could make money. I'm hoping I sell out of all 6,000 shirts 
before the show even starts next Friday. People will be able to go in there, use their credit, get a shirt for free plus shipping, resell that, hopefully make 10 times their money. So that's the goal, price something cool. All the shirts that I'm presenting, I'm also gonna show during the stream so people can see what they're gonna get. On a mystery stream, remember, you have to show what the item is in order for it to qualify for whatnot's rules. So you can't just do a mystery box and not tell people what's in it. So you have to show that. So it's important to understand and make it as fun as possible, good brand, cool, great entertainment and production value, great price. So I'm gonna go over the eight different strategies that I like to run during shows. And I think I have seen numerous examples of this work. Number one is gonna be a mystery. So for example, somebody buys item one through 10, they pick one through 10, you show number seven, which is what they picked on the stream. That's just a true mystery, random, people are buying something that they are looking forward to getting. You could run singles all day, which I consider one of the OG original great ways to do whatnot, which is just you just list 200 items into your store and then you auction them one at a time and you do your best as a presenter to get the maximum value per item. I think singles works really well, but it's heavily dependent on the items that you get and the quality and personality of the host. Um, a great host can sell pretty much anything and great items don't need a great host. So remember, it's important to think about um, if you're gonna run the singles game, which always works, to have either great stuff or a great host or both. Next is going to be buyer's choice, which is very interesting. And I've seen this work really well with jewelry, with collectibles, in a sense where you start the auction at a certain timer. Um, I like to go shorter timers, like 15 seconds, 20 seconds. But if you have a lot to cover, like in another example of selling bundles, Right now in the background, we're running auctions that are five minutes long because we need to explain everything that's in the bundle. Um, but for singles or one-off items or mystery, I think the shorter um, 15, 20 second auctions make it a lot more fun. So in the buyer's choice, you would start the auction at a dollar, run it for however much you want, and somebody would just pick which item they want. So. Buyer's choice seems to work really well for me because people pick the items that they think are cool and not just the items that are um, the most valuable. So you end up having people pick items that are just like average and keeping the grail item still available, which is potentially the most expensive. So I recommend if you're gonna do buyer's choice to replace the item that sells with another item so that people don't get bored if the best item gets taken early. So card breaks are massive. So, um, these are some of the cards that I'm working with a different distributor to see if it's gonna be worth it. We've got soccer, we've got um, some stuff from Panini. All of these are hobby boxes. We've got Pokemon, Japanese and regular Pokemon. We have this crazy NBA break, which I think is just one card. And I don't know all the difference between all these different breaks. However, I'm gonna do a stream where I break all these boxes live and we go over all the different strategies for breaking boxes and I would say the majority of whatnot is card breakers, people who earn their money from the competition and the mystery of looking for items. Some would say it's, it's a form of gambling, but I think that the way that they've set it up on whatnot, it's legit because everyone gets an equal chance of winning. So that's a different scenario. It's more like whatever terminology they use for the legality. It's a little different. Next is gonna be bundles where you sell boxes of items that have an assortment of different items. And what you can do with that is essentially, essentially offset the cost of shipping. So you figure out the flat rate ways of shipping an item. First class mail goes up to 16 ounces. Um, so when you figure out the breaks for the price points for dimensions and weight, you can now make a bundle for the customer which saves them money on shipping. So bundles work really well, they've worked well for me. Finally, the, the last three things that really, really help are giveaways. Let's say I were to give away $2,500 with the car breaks on my stream or I give away a PS5 or I give away a car, give away a Lamborghini. That stuff is exciting, gets people into your stream. Also a launch is gonna be something that people really look forward to. So on the theme show, we're gonna run 6,000 t-shirts, all one niche, all one topic. So people know they show up to the show, they're getting a t-shirt. We have all the different sizes, small, medium, large, extra large, double extra large. People can pick a mystery shirt in their specific size, or they can bid on a specific shirt during the auction. So I have literally all of these elements in the show, except for card breaks, because um, there's no cards in the show, but we're utilizing all of the other techniques. So please smash the like button, consider subscribing. I've got one bonus tip, which really is an indicator of, of how quality your stream is, and that is your expertise on the subject. 
So when I'm running that t-shirt show, I'm gonna do it with John, he's the supplier. He's gonna go over right now his expertise or an example of his expertise on some t-shirts to show you guys how that can elevate the value of the item. Hey guys, so check this out. I pulled a dozen shirts from the assortment that we're gonna be running next Friday. Um, this is a couple of categories and I just wanna go over a couple of details on these tees. So maybe you can use some of this knowledge when you're out there in the field looking at tees and also a preview of kind of what's to come. So this first one's one of the older tees that we have. It's a Led Zeppelin licensed to Myth Gem 1991 on this old Hanes tag size large single stitch all around. Um, Myth Gem was a, a licensing company, still is a licensing company owned by the band itself. And you know, in comparison to something like this, licensed to 2006, still a pretty old tee, almost 20 years old. Led Zeppelin, still licensed to Myth Gem by Bravado, who ended up doing a lot of the printing for this band and other bands even till today. Cool stairway shirt, also on a Hanes tag, more Y2K with the Stairway to Heaven lyrics on the back. Uh, one thing I wanted to kind of note, kind of going along with this bravado theme, is that a lot of buyers get turned away by this printed tag. It's like, I still even consider this vintage, because look at this, it's a 2004 piece that's almost 20 years old. So you can't necessarily look at a printed tag and be like, oh, that's not really vintage. You can have a printed tag and still be like a cool piece. So keep an eye out in the field for those. We got a, some printed tags on the music pieces, some uh, traditional tags also on the neck label. Going back to another older piece on the Hanes 100% cotton made in USA, single stitch all around. You look at this cool front print, 1989 Budweiser concert, but the back hit really makes it. Look at that Bobby Brown, Patti LaBelle, LaVert, the OJs. Really, really cool lineup over here. And we got this in white too with a different lineup, which includes MC Hammer, another cool band piece. Now going along with music too, this is a Michael Jackson tee from 2009 on a Toltex. And what's interesting about this, and we probably have maybe like 10 to 12 Michael Jackson pieces, is from the tour that never happened in 2009. I mean, we're still talking about, you know, 10 plus, 10 plus years ago. And really, really cool art, nice screen print, really cool graphics. Um, just a really nice piece. It goes back to like, hey, you know what? Wear what you like, wear what, what you think is cool. Um, um, the first piece was from Winterland. That Budweiser piece was from Winterland. And this is a nature piece also from Winterland. Traditional AOP Studio Q on uh, the Onita tag. Studio Q was a Bay Area brand doing a lot of nature tees printed by Winterland. Um, you get some Gucci vibes with this coral snake AOP front and back. If you guys look at some auctions online, uh, search for Studio Q you'll see some pieces going for over 200 bucks. Um, pretty exciting stuff. Keep your eye out on Studio Q stuff for nature prints. Um, let's look at a couple of other nature prints over here. Same garment wash as this front piece. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out here is that similar graphic, same time, one single stitch all around and one's double stitch all around. So a lot of these, a lot of newer vintage collectors are looking at tees and be like, oh, you know what? It's not single stitch, it's not vintage. You know what? This is still a 90s piece, double stitch all the way around. Really, really cool graphic. Keep your eye out for these too. More Winterland pieces, great, great comic graphics. You got Barbie, you got Jetsons with the wraparound print, Dick Tracy comic strip print with the Madonna hit on it also right here. Really cool piece. Onita right here. One thing to point out also, and this is something that's a little more common in the older pieces. This is dated 19, probably like 88 uh, Barbie Mattel, which still does Barbie today. 50-50. So 50-50 is going to mean half polyester and half cotton. And you'll see this more common in 80s and 70s pieces versus the 90, 90s pieces. And last, I kind of wanted to end off on this. This is another Winterland piece and people will think, look at that. Haynes tag, Tommy, it's a bootleg. Now you know what it's not. Tommy Hilfiger had Winterland doing the production for them in the 90s. It still has a Tommy Hill jock tag over here. It just didn't make the relabel process, so it didn't go out to retail. More little tidbits and more vintage stuff, uh, little knowledge you'll learn here and there when you tune into our podcast. Uh, me and Chris are gonna be on for about four to five hours 
feel free to jump in, ask questions, happy to share knowledge with you guys. But more importantly, check out all the cool stuff we have. Lots of cool deals and uh, I'll see you guys there. I want you guys to use those four strategies to build value in your items and the eight strategies to really boost up your whatnot presence. So if you're not on whatnot yet, you're really missing out. You should at least get approved. So the main things you're gonna be looking for are, do you have supply of the items? Do you have a social media presence? or do you have a referral? So hopefully I can do my best to get you approved. If you wanna email me at chrisadailyrefinement.com, what I need to apply for you is, I need your name, your phone number, your email, your whatnot username, and please create some social media presence for yourself, even if you don't use it, because that's gonna really improve your chances of being approved through me. So if you have a YouTube channel, set it up, set up a trailer, set up a schedule, get into it because it's part of this new era of selling. So for me personally, I got suspended on eBay for essentially selling too many items and not being able to provide invoices for the chain of custody. If you're gonna do a large scale, you really need to focus on your supply chain. So again, supply chain and social media are gonna save you because with my social media presence, I was able to pick up new suppliers and different supply chains to continue. So you need to be building that up right now. It's really important. Build up your whatnot presence. It building up your whatnot presence requires you to build up your social media. So get on that, apply towards me, chrisadailyrefinement.com, and I'll do my best to get you approved. So again, a reminder for our show, July 8th, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, we're gonna run 6,000 shows, and I'm gonna show you guys all eight of these strategies live in person. So you can join, all shirts are gonna be $10 a piece plus shipping. So the more you buy, the more you save on shipping. Appreciate you guys, until next time, make progress daily.